We have boxes of bees. I mean, we're going through a major hatch right now. This was a medium colony that we upgraded to a strong. So, I mean, this queen has a little bit of spirit in her. What is she, a 2015? So she's got to be a, a younger supersedure. But look, it's just a box of bees. And if you look what's going on, they're just hanging off the frames, which is not a good sign because that's going to allow the queen to come down and lay queen cells. Come on, bees. Well, they're not moving for me. So they're starting to come down. They're laying drone brood underneath here. So that's a really good sign. That means this colony has some girth. It's feeling really good. You're going to notice some queen cups here. But they haven't had any attention put to them yet. But they will next week, I bet you. Once this hive goes through more of its hatch, this colony is going to feel extremely full. She's going to come down and start preparing to swarm. So we have to get space on top to be able to pull these bees off the bottoms of the frames, move them up into the top box to kind of avert the swarming spirit. So we're just entering into that. I'm not sure if I'm making the right decision here. I could be making a big mistake. I guess I just won't know until a few weeks pass by and we see the ultimate results of my uh, management here. And it'll only be between Carrie and I and 43,000 subscribers. One of our mergers, we're just doing a spot check to see how the acceptance went. These bees definitely moved up. So that's a big strong colony on the bottom and a smaller, should have brought smoke over, and a smaller uh, little nuke that we put up on top. She's still laying. So that would have been the brood in the original nest. Where's the eggs, do you see? She's got to be careful where I put this thing. She's been, she's got young larvae here and then eggs spreading out all the way down through the drone comb down there. And she's making use of the population. Let's go one more in. Oh, there she is. Holy shit, she's a big one. You could spot that queen a mile away. So she's taken kindly to this nest arrangement. Maybe we'll just leave them. Let's go check another one. Okay. Let's tip this back, see if they've come through. Whoop. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe they come. Let's take a look in here. Might be rushing these guys just a little bit. They've been on for just over a week now. There, that's better. So this hive has moved up. Strong hive in the bottom, right? And we put a small nuke on top and we separated with a paper towel and an excluder. So they slowly chewed through the paper towel and slowly merged boosting the top box with bees. There is, you can see her old nest there, which is, looks really good. Where is she? Right in the center. Ah, there she is. She's a dandy. And she has got that frame right filled out. Let's see to the other side of that. What's happening on there? Oh yeah, I can see larvae from here. So I think this queen looks like she's got a little bit of potential to her. 
And all she needed just a little boost of bees. That looks nice. How far down is those eggs? Right to the bottom, I guess, eh? Yep. So that looks like it's going to work. We're going to leave that on for another week and a half or two weeks or whatever. We're so far behind, I'm not sure when we'll get back to pull these off, but there's no real rush on it right now. Not until that brood in the top box top starts to emerge. These ones we're putting seconds on are boxes of bees, so I'm targeting anything that's eight frames and over. Anything like that gets a second on it. And I'm making a tough secondary call here because I'm not promoting anything that's less than seven frames. So anything that's less than seven frames, like this one, I had this one marked as a blue tag, and it definitely is not, does not have as many bees as those other hives. So I'm taking them, assessing these ones down, and I'm not assessing them down to any fault of their own. It's just the day that I went through, I probably was just a little optimistic on it. But a hive of this strength, which I'm, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, six and a half frames of bees there. They're not getting seconds. So I'm making for damn sure that I'm not putting the seconds on anything that doesn't hold that girth of bees inside the colony. Just because I'm scared of this cold weather coming through. It's supposed to be minus five tonight. I mean, highs to high tomorrow of seven or something like that. And extending into the weekend, they're even talking snow again. I can't. I, I, uh, if it snows again, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to... Okay, I'm going to throw a frame at you the next time you see the S. <laughs> what can we do? All we can do is just keep these colonies fed, manage them the best we can. So we have patties on them all. So even if they are trapped inside their colonies for the next week or whatever, they'll have something to chew on. And... Everything is getting pails, but so by the end of tomorrow, everything should be topped up with pails again. We have two additions to the farm yesterday. What's this one's name? This one's name is Blue, and this one's name is Molly. Molly. Two little ponies for the girls. Back to my grumpy face. I've been talking to a lot of beekeepers about their bees and and the weather and everybody is extremely frustrated with this 
this weather we can't get our work done everybody is staggered some guys hives are in better shape than others these bees are on the feeder pail that is a really good sign we have pails on absolutely every colony now big ones or small ones everything has feed we got through yesterday and everything has more supplement on so all these colonies are drinking down the syrup so that's good that means this is cold weather that means the bees are moving up to take the syrup just try to do this without disturbing them too much so what I want to see is I want to see if the, those bees are moving up into this top box and in effect turning this top box into part of their cluster and if they're doing that then I don't have to worry about the integrity of this cluster down here if they're actively able to raise the ceiling I don't have my bee suit here they're gonna get me they're a little pissed so they have filled this is a really good sign they have filled every seam in that top box that looks really good it kind of eases me a little bit so what's all my fuss about what I'm worried about is when I had my lid on here this is a ceiling to this colony they had organized their nest down in this bottom box according to their ceiling right over top of them I slap another box on top of them I just give them a lot more house to maintain directly above that cluster and it just changes all those cluster dynamics down within that bottom box the temperature humidity just the way they organize their cluster around their brood instantly this cluster has received space over top of it and in a way instantly they have to reorganize themselves reorganize the cluster that itself to be able to maintain all the work they've got done and achieved down below now that's not going to matter to a colony like this which has girth to it which has very effectively and instantly kind of moved their cluster up to fill this top box to be able to maintain all the dynamics going down below this colony I don't expect to see any stress whatsoever but a colony that is a little bit smaller those are the ones that I'm really concerned about the ones that maybe are borderline I put all that space up overhead they have to reorganize all their work down here to be able to maintain what they have going on in here because of all this headspace their ceiling has moved up it, it it'll induce just a little bit of stress to these colonies and it's that little bit of stress I'm fussing about it's that stress that just opens up the opportunity for disease to then come in and take foothold just that little just that little time, point in time where the bees are kind of maybe just shocked a little bit because of the cold weather maybe because of malnourishment because there's not as much food coming in and because of my management practice here which just changes their house a little bit just kind of pulls them back just a little bit just that instant just that little point in time just a little bit of stress provides opportunity and that opportunity is taken by disease absolutely every time and it'll come in and take its foothold so we went through this last these last few days and we specifically targeted the strong ones assuming that these strong ones would not be interfered by this cold weather and such and they would be able to handle the space that we put on top anything over eight frames we put boxes on top anything under eight frames we've left alone so now that's that's good because it's kept these colonies tight in their little singles but now when this weather breaks we're going to have a boatload of strong colonies still in single boxes that are going to need attention right now Six degrees and the bees are flying so as goes my rule when 
there is beekeeping weather. We work bees. Right now I have the crew busy just doing maintenance work inside the honey house with uh, cleaning up frames and painting boxes and making patties. I think I'm going to, it's too cold. I mean, it was minus nine last night and we're not out of it yet. So it's too cold to actually do any transfer work. We got to move these nukes and it's too cold to, I don't know, it's too cold to do anything really. I don't want to stagger these highs by trying to manipulate them. So we're not going to work these highs. We're going to have to be a little more patient and just allow things to happen. But the bees are flying, so we got to get some work done because once this nice weather comes, we are going to be so far behind, we won't know which way to turn. It's six degrees and they're bringing streams of pollen into the colony. Uh, just so encouraging. It's actually a beautiful day, nice and sunny, no wind. And six degrees is supposed to get up to 10, I hope. My intention here is just to peek down into this brood nest just to see what's going on. These hives, obviously, we'll take a peek here. There are six frames of bees and they are ready to be transferred. I just want to see how many frames of broods going on inside. I just want to see um, how that nest has been developing over the last few days. So here's a frame with some honey on it. Full of eggs and larvae. And this side is right full of larvae, young larvae, just hatched. Could have a little more jelly in the bottom of those cells. But we're going through a dearth and they've run out of supplement. If I had a patty, I'd give them right now. Here's a full frame of brood, which is emerging. This side is emerging and being filled up with eggs right away. So we have little guys coming out and the queen's got to be close because there's eggs all through here. So she's using her space wisely. So what I'm concerned about is being a staggered development between the uh, of the brood because of this cold weather we've had. I'm seeing old brood, the cat brood, I'm seeing eggs, I'm seeing young brood, I'm seeing larvae that's just hatched from the egg. Beautiful. These guys need to be transferred. They're, they're going to start getting tight. They're not overly crowded right now. The queen seems to have lots of space here to lay. She's filling in all that space as the brood emerges. But as that brood emerges, this colony is going to get full and fuller and fuller of bees. Beautiful frame of brood. I haven't found that queen yet. She must be on the last frame. So I look at a frame of bees, a uh, frame of brood, cat brood. I pretty much count one frame of brood to three frames of bees. As you, if you think of it, the, the brood, the bees are pointing this way. When they emerge, the bees are pointing that way. So it, they take up three times the space. So when this emerges, this hive is going to overflow with bees. So we need to we need to transfer these this equipment. So I must have missed her through there. I didn't see her. She must have been on that frame with the eggs. Here's a frame of no eggs in this one. But it's got stored syrup. All right.
so I'm running out of time. They have, what did it count? One, two, three, four, four frames of brood going inside. Uh, that is emerging right now. <clears throat> the queen is following suit, laying eggs everywhere she can. I've been uh, able to keep the feed to them, so they have lots of food stores. There's a very important food rim around that brood nest. That's extremely important just to maintain the uh, uh, the optimism of that colony to continue brood rearing. There's a lot of promise in that nest. They're maintaining themselves. They've held their integrity. They've continued on development of themselves throughout all this cold crap weather, which is really reassuring. So it's, so it's provided me optimism, but it's also provided me just that sense of sheer panic. Uh, we've got so much work we've got to do when this weather breaks. Like I'm not going to, we can't do this, any of this work, any of the transferring, any hive work through the shit weather, because it does it won't do the colony any good. We have to keep these nests tight. We have to maintain its integrity. We have to, you know, force that queen to utilize that space that she has there. We need to keep those bees, you know, just confined in that box to be able to, you know, maintain that house and develop out these nests best they can through these really tough conditions. As soon as this weather breaks, we hit some 20 degree days. These nests are just going to explode in size. They're, they're going to stretch out a little bit and we're going to see instant response like that. These nukes are going to need space then right now. We'll have to get them transferred into their single box equipment. I also have a bunch of them sold so I'll have to which is going to take me a lot of time just the act of selling. So we're going to have to transfer them into the equipment to sell and then push them out before they get too full. Oh, and then we got to start queen rearing. We were going to, I was projecting to start on the 10th, which was yesterday, I guess. But like, you, uh, I'm not going to fight Mother Nature. I'm just going to try to just uh, roll with the punches. So as soon as she breaks, we're going to go and we're going to start searching the apiary for surplus strength. We're going to dedicate one, maybe two yards and just skim all the strength and make up a bunch of builders. Before long, we're going to need to have those queens ready to take off these splits. Uh, but before that, we have to go through the apiary. We've got to go through all these single boxes. And we've got to skim down those big ones that we didn't double up skim off some of that brood so they don't swarm off and boost up some of these smaller ones just to help them catch up. So we got to do all this work within a week. It's going to be pretty busy, but uh, I'm not going to complain. Bring on that nice weather. Calm and foggy morning this morning. The best thing about this morning was I woke up, walked out the door to plus six. So that's encouraging. Just moving some more bees with Stubby. Just trying to poke away these yards every morning. Uh, trying to spread them out as the uh, land dries. Slowly but surely it's drying. This yard is probably one of my wetter yards and I just got out. It's a good thing I live on 4x4. Four four. So I'll clean that up. Once it dries, I'll bring the, the tractor and the blade and just smooth those down. Try to repair all my yards that have destroyed this spring, just, you know, so it doesn't haunt me for the rest of my beekeeping career. As I'm loading my hives up here, I have a few empty spots to fill. So this is when I'm starting to take advantage of the... Uh, the merger I put those smaller type nukes on top of big units they've merged I've had the girls go around and queen checks everything's queen checked I think at about 125 or so we had one that got killed off so that's pretty good the nests are looking really good up on top nice and viable um, and cat brood so they're main they you know they've established a nice little nest now that it's starting to warm I'm gonna start stripping these uh, top units off and put in their own place. I didn't want to do that before when it was cold just because they've they've organized their nest between the two boxes you know the cluster is going between the two and I take I take it apart put it in a new spot and that hive all of a sudden has all these dynamics that you know they're relying on the heat from underneath the girth of bees have taken that away you know they, their nest is 
stretched right down to that bottom box. So I take that away and it's cold and they just can't maintain all that work that they've established with that big nest. So I have to make sure to do this when it's warm. And now we're starting to approach into warmth. <clears throat> Not to mention the bottom one, I take away the top. Although they're just getting a, uh, a ceiling right over top of them anyway. So the bottom one would be fine. Just that top one. We just got to make sure that as we're working, that as we manipulate these colonies, that they can adjust to the conditions that we, that we force them into. And I think now, you know, a nighttime low of plus six, and I'm looking ahead. We're looking into 20s for daytime highs. Yeah, I can only hope. But uh, with this optimism moving forward, I think our manipulations, the, uh, the stress we induce on the colonies with them, uh, will become minimized. So I can see now it's one, two, three, four, five, five and a half frames of bees up top. So I'm simply going to just strip this box off the top here. Make them their own little unit again. Man, I wish I had my smoker going for that. Be a lot simpler with smoke, but don't have the smoker going. Because so. they did not like that. box full of bees. Not quite as full. One, two, three, four, five, six frames of bees. That'll work. Some of these bigger units underneath are stronger than others, so some give more than others. This unit chewed through, for, through more of the newspaper, just a larger unit. This one is much smaller, so there's a little patch. Just let them do what they want to do. One of the reasons why I use smoke when I'm beekeeping is just to help keep these bees calm. Like I stripped these merger units off without smoke and that really agitated that nest. And it's not good. Any time that you can practice, any time that you can manipulate a hive without, you know, disrupting them, uh, you, you take the extra effort to do that. And one of those things is smoke. You notice sometimes I don't use as much smoke as I should but then you'll notice that I use smoke a lot because they really lean on smoke to make sure that when I'm working these colonies that I can keep them calm you know that smoke that disrupts the the whole alarm pheromone and that disruption as you're working with them and you just a little bit of smoke doesn't take much just a little bit just calms that nest allows you to do what you want to do without getting them all stirred up especially when I'm stripping off these merger units out on top I'm spending so much time trying to set up the right environment to have that unit, like the two queens and the bees inside, cooperate with each other. Then I go and just rip these off the top, throw them onto another bottom board, get both nests all riled up. Sometimes when that happens, those bees will turn on the queen. They, they, lo they just love to blame the queen for everything that goes on within that nest. So I'm hoping, because of my impatience here, because I didn't bring a smoker with me this morning 
that this unit it will just settle right down and just leave that queen alone and then when I set them down they'll just carry on action as if very little has happened but there's a chance that those bees are balling that queen right now just because of all that disruption I provided them and I didn't do that extra step just to calm them to ensure that my work wasn't really going to shake them up And this is the proper way of doing it. Let's see what we got here. Big hive, so I'm counting, they're kind of spread out, but I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They'll probably make themselves into a seven or eight frame. It's really nice. This hive still looks a little bit big. So we're gonna have to come through and probably equalize from this colony yet, which is no big deal. What I could be doing is, I could be equalizing between the top and bottom unit. So I could be pulling some brood from the bottom, bring them up top, just to equalize out the unit so that when I strip off that box, and all the equalization work is done in here and this box has already been equalized also just and then I could just simply strip it away later but uh, timeline's not working that way I'm just gonna have to go through and all I'm doing is just stripping off the top boxes because they hold themselves with a nice little cluster now throw them into their place and then we'll equalize later on when we come back through when the weather is warmer minus one last night but I looked at the forecast and it looks like this is the end of it. Uh, we're looking at highs of 20s, 25s, 28s further out and nighttime lows of 5s, 10s, 14s. So we're actually going to get some lows that are the same as our highs over the last few days. So for those who are endlessly curious in what I'm doing here, I'm going through a process of merger. I'm going, I'm taking a, so I guess I'll go right from the start. I made a bunch of nukes up last summer. 
and five frames, six frames, put them into winter, brought them out of winter, everything looks in fantastic shape. We've been slapped with this really cold spring. And the fives are just a little bit smaller, just for a lot of reasons, but most because they were built in a five frame arrangement. So they just had less space to be able to build out their nest last, uh, last fall, which is what the whole purpose is around building nukes throughout the summer, is to keep them restricted in a smaller space, not to wear that queen out until you need her for the next season. Get them through a nice, decent little cluster and they'll explode the next spring. Well, the sixes made it through all right just because they had a little bit of extra girth in there, but the fives had just a little bit of trouble because their nest was just a little bit smaller. So through this cold weather, they were just weren't able to move forward and progress the same as the rest of the apiary. It's just mostly because of the cold weather just staggered their development, right? So there's nothing wrong with those little fives. Those little fives had terrific little queens in there. They had you know, those fives, I put two of them together to cooperate through the honey flow. They built me like seven boxes of honey on a stack. Just absolutely tremendous. So they're very well proven. When they come out of winter, when we hit this spring, they staggered a little bit, fell back. So what we did is we took those fives and we put them over top of a strong unit. Okay, like one of those big boxes of bees. We put uh, paper, newspaper, or paper towel, or whatever, over top of that strong unit with the queen excluder, and we put the small little nuke on top of that big unit. And over time, the bees in the strong unit chewed through that paper and very slowly merged with that top unit. So very, in very effect, I had a queen going in the bottom in that strong unit, just chugging along, and then a queen on the top smaller unit that needed a boost. So those bees from the big unit and all the warmth and humidity from that bottom unit went up and kind of boosted that smaller nuke. And that's a, those are the nukes I'm stripping off right now. So we gave them two and a half, three weeks. I forget my timelines now. But we gave them enough time to be able to allow the merger, to be able to boost that top colony. We left them alone just to, you know, prevent any type of disturbance to allow the merger of those two queen scents. So then in very effect, those two queens were operating with the same bees in that colony. We allowed that top unit to establish her nest with the amount of bees that were given or that were allowed from the bottom unit and got, to, got her to a point now where she has cat brood up on top and she's maintaining a nice tight little cluster. We're going through now with the anticipation of nice weather and we're stripping off those top boxes to be thrown back into the apiary uh, to fill in dead spots or empty spots. As we go around with the second, third call, we make a pretty tough call in some of these colonies and we leave a bunch of empty spots all over the place. So these merger units are being stripped off right now, thrown onto a bottom board just for transport and we'll be taking them to yards throughout the apiary just to fill in dead spots. So they'll, they've maintained their little nest, they've been taken off, they're, they're operating on their own now. So it's a neat little trick one thing I really need to stress when doing this type of merger is I'm not, everybody says merging a weak colony. I don't promote weak colonies. I promote vigor. I promote um, optimism and anticipated development, growth, you know, potential. Potential is what I'm promoting. I'm not, I'm not trying to prop up any type of weak stock. You're not doing yourself any good if you're doing that. You just gotta be able to look at what's going on and see all the situations that are influencing the apiary and just try to help, you know, our job as a beekeeper is just to help manage through some of these tough situations. And that's what we're doing here with those little fives. We're just trying to boost our population threshold up a little bit, just to allow that colony enough bees, enough girth to be able to advance. And now they're good. The girls went through a few days ago on an you know, the warmest afternoon we could find. They went down and they spot checked for eggs just to make sure that the top unit was viable. Um, and they were for the most part, we only lost one out of 125 or whatever that was. So the merger worked really well. I wanted to wait to do this procedure when the temperature started cooperating with us. Like it's been 
minus nines, minus eights, minus fives, daytime highs of only five or six, and if we get up to 10, we feel pretty good. That's too cold, uh, so I wasn't, we weren't stripping any of these boxes. We weren't doing any major hive work throughout the cold because it just compromises the integrity of that, that colony. So last night it was minus one. I'm looking ahead to plus fives, plus sixes, plus tens, plus fourteens of nighttime lows. You know, and then daytime highs of 20s and 25s and even a 28 put in there. So that's that's provided us the opportunity to, you know, promote and advance the apiary moving forward. I didn't want to do this through that cold weather because it just shocks the integrity of that top unit. The top unit had gained the bees up top, right? And it's established its nest and it's probably stretching its brood down to that bottom cluster just because of all those heat dynamics coming up and humidity and everything and the girth of bees. I stripped that top box off. That nest is still stretched down to the bottom of the frame. So they need to make sure that they are able to hold that cluster down over all that work that's been established so that uh, when I take them off, it doesn't, you know, they don't shrink to the cold and have to abandon some of that brood. That's bad news once that starts to happen because it just forces a sense of shock and stress on the colony. And uh, that's when you get disease problems and, and the colony will start falling backwards. So we want to move things forward at all times, moving things forward best we can just to promote that forward movement. So we got to make for damn sure what we're doing here doesn't negatively affect what's going on inside there. So at any rate, I better get back to work because the day is moving on on me. It's not, it's not waiting for me. So I'm just going through, I'm just gonna pick 25 of these off this morning and get them out, spread them out to some of these uh, queenless, or not queenless, but these empty spots within my apiary. Try to get all this, <clears throat> those 24 spread out amongst uh, empty spots. Um, just gonna target a few yards uh, before the crew shows up at eight and it's supposed to be a nice day. The bees tell you exactly the size of that cluster just by the amount of paper that they re removed. Part of that is it's been so cold that they don't stretch themselves out as much. They don't remove all the paper, they just remove what they have to around that cluster because it, that paper really annoys them so they want to get rid of it. But it shows you a very clear defined cluster through that paper and I'm pulling off these uh, these mergers and I can almost tell just by looking at that paper how many bees are going to be in the top box. I mean you get hives like this, whoops, that's pretty much a box of bees that have been given to the top. You know more bees promoted up top whereas I look at this one and I'm looking at like four or five frames so that, that uh, the amount of bees they were probably going to give to the top is probably a lot less. Building builders this morning with this well building builders this morning with the da, 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 da. Good morning. Good morning. Building builders this morning with this warmth. Just about done digging through this yard, making up builders. 
We're going to be one builder shy, so we're going to have to go to another yard to do that, but we'll find those bees on another day because we have transferring and nukes to do. So what we're going to do, because we're using this hive or these hives just for the bees, we have to make for damn sure that we don't take too many bees away from these guys, that they can't maintain all that work that he just established for themselves. So we're going to probably skim off the bees from the top box. Uh, we're going to go down to the bottom. We're going to sort those brood frames down to the bottom, skim a few bees, and then uh, just leave them so it satisfies all their work requirements. All this pollen coming in is just crazy. We're pulling frames out, searching for the queen, and we're wasting pollen. They're just fresh little grains, or what do you call the pollen, the leg of a bee? Grain? Pulling grains? I think it's pollen grains. At any rate, I think you know what I'm talking about. They just freshly put them into the cells. We lift the frame up and we're actually wasting the pollen as it's dropping into the grass. It's like, oh crap. But there's that's how much pollen's coming into the colony right now. They're just packing frames full. It's so exciting. Finally, we're getting some development and some movement forward. But now we just gotta, you know, pedal to the metal and try to keep up to these girls. How are these builders settling in? Oh, well those four are definitely queens. Awesome. Yeah. Sure, a stir of activity here, oh man. Just gonna give them some syrup to fill up those stomachs. We'll have them on constant feed. Because these are our builders. <clears throat> so we have seven going here now. We have to add one more to make a full cycle. And these two will be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then once we get another one in here for this row, where did I say? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and back Friday. We'll just keep cycling them through. Did you have a chance to put pollen frames into them? Yep, they've got those four black pollen frames. Anybody else that I've sorted has pollen frames? Everything is ready to go. So we have a foundation, honey, pollen, and this is a foundation <laughs> as a place taker for a graft. Pollen, another foundation for a place taker for a graft. Pollen foundation feeder. So this will be our slot A. Slot B, and once we get this thing cooking mm -hmm. in about uh, four or five days, maybe when we come back to this builder to drop us another graft frame into, we'll exchange this frame for a brood frame and cycle the brood frames through every week. Mm -hmm. I have a box of foundation underneath just for a place to hang all those surplus bees, so we have these packed. And I'll show you the process as we go. We are going to dig into the builders to see how the graft went. Carrie is into our breeder to find some larvae. Whoa. Those guys aren't happy. I'll just kind of hide from them. So we're going to dig into the builder here. I want to see what this graft looks like. This is the first graft. So sometimes the first one's a bit of a challenge as we get things up and running. We have a heavy pollen flow. We don't have any nectar coming in yet. They are on the patty. That's nice to see. Loads of pollen. If there's anything, these colonies are becoming pollen bound, which is kind of frustrating. 
but they have a lot of protein to work with. How is the level of sugar in there? Uh, it's sitting about right here. Oh yeah. So they've only taken it down about an inch and a half. Lots of bees in here. We'll just take a peek and see what the acceptance is. I went and lost Carrie's flashlight, so she was using her cell phone to find the larvae. These guys aren't very happy either. I don't see too many blanks there. Not seeing any. So that is a hundred percent. Not too bad for a first graft. So that looks good. Let's take a look into that first builder. Let me just take a peek here. So if you see what's going on. Boy, they're sure drawing out the wax. These bees are motivated. It's pretty obvious which cells are accepted. This is 24 hours after graft and they've just nicely pulled down the wax and they're just starting to freshen up the cells with some nice real jelly. We'll check them tomorrow maybe, probably not check them tomorrow, but when, if we were to check them tomorrow, that real jelly will start to be pulled down within the cells. We try to leave the builders alone as much as we can Least amount of disturbance is the best. We need some nectar flow to get these guys in a happy mood. They're not short on bees anyway. So that's good. Take a look at this next builder. So I plan on boosting. There's a little builder going on over there. We never finished that one, so I'm gonna finish that one. I'm gonna add two more to this line so we can do at, what is this? Today is, what's today? Yesterday is Tuesday. Today's Wednesday. Today's Tuesday. Today's Tuesday. So you did this Monday, so that Tuesday, then Wednesday and Thursday, we're gonna do three graft frames just because we have a little bit of demand. They're not as populated. These guys could use a shake of bees by the looks of it. They might have drifted to another colony. But we'll take a look to see how they're doing. I'll maybe give them a boost today. We'll see what the graft frame looks like. I don't have as many bees on the frame, but well, there's enough bees there. So that's 27 out of 30. All right, so that's good. That's an excellent start. So we have 57 cells, right? 57 that will be ready in nine days. So that's off to a real good start. Are you making out? I gotta give you Joe May's uh, crafting tools. Is that I'm light working for you? I wonder if his would have a lid. I wonder if his would have a ledge. That's what the issue that I've had with these is that they've got a ledge on the... A ledge? What does that mean? Like too wide? Uh, no, w wideness isn't the issue. It's the lip's got a bit of a ledge that you have to get the larvae over oh. in order to. Here, yeah. I'm gonna go find them. Do 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 do. Don't crush that. That's from Joe May. Got three of them here. 
so you can try them out and see. So that's what you mean? I guess you'll find well, it. Yeah, kind of have to see them first. I think he's yeah, kind he's of sanded them down or something. Yeah, it looks like he's gotten rid of that little ledge. Give that a try, anyways. Which ones are down? These ones. Yeah. And then work on these ones. Boy, that tray is a neat little trick. Super cool. Well, I better go see if the crew's still working. Good luck. Nice if we had some fresh nectar come in already. Boatload of pollen, but we haven't had any flowers come out yet. Dun dun dun! Look at that bee inside that. Even more, we can get a focus. That's cool. Uh, that looks pretty good to me. No blanks? I don't see a single blank. Nice. That bee wait, still in wait there. that's a blank. Yeah, one blank. There you go. Dun dun dun. See the uh, royal jelly they're pulling it down. That's how I many? This is 36 hours now? What's this yes. one? No, this one's 24 hours, eh? This is yesterday? Yeah, this is yesterday. Well, that's, look at the jelly nope. they've yeah, got in there the already. That's 24 hours. I like the cells you can see through. Oh, this end one's blank. Yeah. You can see what's going on. That wax looks nice. So that's one on that one, so that's two blanks out of 60. This feels heavy. Ooh, look at that. There's one blank. Just two, just two blanks. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so the last, today we've grafted a third bar in here. We're going to try three cell bars per frame just to increase our builder capacity because these guys look like they're handling the work quite well so that's uh one two three four right yep out of how many do we have 90 90 four Very blanks at a 90 holy shit carry that's even without any type of natural forage coming in highest grade i've ever had <laughs> <laughs> well, congrats. Pretty much have this nuke yard sold off now. A yard that was full with boxes and bees. Now pretty much empty. Just have a few hives here that didn't make the grade to sell. So I will likely, the queens are still good in there. They just need a little bit of time. And I'll likely move those off into some empty spots within the apiary. But for the most part, my yard is empty. Just brought a couple more guys out here to pick up some more hives. And these are the last ones to be moved out. Ready to be sold. To be picked up tomorrow morning. Box of bees. We have had no flowers yet this spring and they're all lining up 
to bloom at exactly the same time. So instead of spreading that nectar flow out nicely throughout the spring where the bees can benefit on that fresh nutritious nectar coming in with the pollen throughout the spring, it's all going to happen all at once here. So if I go ahead and fill up these pails with sugar just to keep these hives going for days that they can't fly like today and they fill up the sugar and then all of a sudden all this fresh stuff comes in and just completely plugs the nests out. We won't be able to work the colonies properly because they're going to be backfilled with nectar and it's just going to cause a whole lot of problems. So I think I'm going to be patient, as patient as I can be, and just wait for this natural stuff to finally come out. Hopefully the weather allows for flight. It's just been a tough spring and we just need we just we need a little bit of good weather to, to help move things forward. Brutal wind last night. Yeah, kept me up all night just thinking about my beehive tops blowing away. So I'm gonna send the crew around just to check lids and make sure everything's in its place. Carrie's in the builder yard this morning and just preparing the cells for the next graft this afternoon and we made our way through the cycle row one row two row three row four back to row one now and to do that we are going to do a little bit of frame shifting so this is the graft frame that we put in when did we put that in on Monday on Monday this is in slot A. We're going to slip this graft frame into slot B and we're going to drop a fresh graft frame in slot A. And the reason why I'm doing that is just because I want to keep this builder in constant building mode. So I don't want to give that start stop. I want those bees to continuously draw these graft frames out. And we'll just take a peek here to see what these cells look like. Two blanks. What did we count last time? I think it was two. Eh? Look at those cells. Just capping. Just capping. Nice looking cells. So this builder is in a really good mood. They've drawn the royal jelly. You can see right down to the edge of the wax, and they're just about to cap these cells off. That is an excellent looking frame. So we are dropping this frame into slot B and that's where it's going to live for the next four days before we take it to the incubator. And this afternoon Carrie's going to graft another frame and drop it in slot A. And this will keep these bees drawing out uh, graft frames continuously so there's no start stop. I don't know if it makes any difference but it sure draws out nice cells and just keeps these guys, keeps these gals in a constant building mode. How's their sugar? They need to be topped up. We'll have to put a bit of sugar in there, so that's good. We don't have any fresh nectar yet, which is extremely frustrating. None of the fruit trees are out. Ah, the dandelions are slow. We have pollen though, so that's good. We have natural stuff coming in, and they are on the patties here, so that's good too. So they have lots of protein on hand, they just need the sugars, and we can give them that. And we have a little bit of rocket fuel in that sugar just to help them out. Okay, good. Let's get, take a look at the other one. So we'll just look at the process in this builder. They are on the patties also. Demand on protein. So that's good to see. They could use a shake of bees by the looks of it. I might have been backwards with that one. Maybe before. One thing about these builders is we want to keep them well stocked. So today we're going to 
gather a few bees from the yards as we're going through with our equalization round and maybe shake a pound of bees per builder just to boost them. We want bees of all ages. Yeah, there's lots of bees there. Quite a few young ones. And we're also going to start rotating brood frames through. We're going to start that on Monday. So what Carrie's going to do is our that's the breeders over there and she's going to pull up they're getting really full of bees so we're going to pull up cap brood over an excluder and then we will cycle them into these builder yards into these builder hives all that fussing with the level on this thing hasn't seemed to bother them that much look at those cells those are nice looking cells so these are going to make excellent little queens that's good work Good deal. There are lots of bees on there, isn't there? Yeah. One blank there. Count as they always do. Okay, that is really good. That's two blanks, I think. Two blanks there. That's good. So that is going to be rotated into slot B, just to finish off those cells, and then we are going to drop a new graft frame after lunch into slot A, and keep her cooking. Kids have four days. So I just wanted to show you guys the reason why I boost smaller colonies. A lot of people will argue that don't boost a small colony because they're small and you shouldn't be, you know, supporting smaller type units. My argument against that is there's a lot of reasons and a lot of conditions for a unit to be small. And some of those not necessarily are the fault of the colony itself. It's just there's so many different variables and situations around us. It might not be the colony's fault why is it small. <clears throat> Our job as a beekeeper is to be able to identify the vigor and the potential within the colony regardless of what it looks like. Just being able to look down and see the potential that we can extract from that unit. And by doing that we'll identify weak colonies and we don't, we shake them out, we don't promote any of that. But as a beekeeper we should be able to see those conditions and see, we should be able to see those traits and characteristics that are within the colony to be able to express their true potential. So this unit is marked as a nuke that we had put over top of a strong unit just because that nuke was small it went through some hard time and it wasn't it needed a boost it was below that population threshold didn't have enough bees to be able to advance itself so we dropped this over top of a strong unit with newspaper and an excluder and we left it for a few weeks just to be able to merge the two units to work together to be able to give this unit a boost. Uh, about a week and a half ago I've taken this off that and I've put it into an empty spot within this yard just to be able to have it uh, move forward uh, as its own separate individual, individual unit. <clears throat> now I'll just show you what's going on in here now. So I haven't found the queen so I'll go back through it again. But what I have here is the start of a brood nest and you can see good laying pattern going on there with the cap brood as on this side too she's got cap brood and she has this laid right out now this is a box of bees so she has all the bees in the world that she needs to be able to use to be able to develop out this nest you see I'm almost out of battery there so I'll quickly go through this so here's another frame solid brood right stretched down to the bottom she stretches all the way down because you can kind of see where that cluster was underneath 
and she has it right down to the bottom. This nuke has been pulled off with enough bees to be able to maintain all that work. That one needs, uh, it needs two and uh, shake of bees, good shake of bees. So here's another frame of brood, stretched right down to the bottom. Anywhere where there's space, they, these hives are just throwing pollen anywhere and everywhere in here, just kind of making a, a mess. But that queen is demanding her space in here, and she has a nice solid pattern. We have brood, we have pollen mostly around the outside and kind of shotgunned right in the middle and then nectar all the way around the outside. That's three frames of brood. This one is a frame that has emerged and she's filled right up with eggs again. And I can see that pollen is kind of just thrown anywhere they could just drop it off as they moved in. Here's a side of brood that's about to emerge. It's more mature. So I call that about half a frame. So that's three and a half frames of brood. Here's a frame that just emerged and filled with eggs. She's got to be close here if there's eggs all through this. Still haven't found her. So this might not quite represent a full frame of brood, but let's call it half. So that's four. And then the last frame, solid frame of brood. This is five. This is heavy. This is right full of brood, bees, and honey. Must be on the next frame. But look at this. I mean, she did that right. She did that right when we uh, probably introduced the two together, where she got that influx of bees that moved up, and she just went crazy laying the eggs. And it is absolutely solid, beautiful egg laying pattern. Take a look at the frame beside here. I bet you she's on here. We're going to have to skim two frames of brood off this colony just so they don't swarm off on us. Still no queen. This is mostly full of pollen and honey. And this side is right full of mature larvae. Still no queen. Where, did, where are you? So we're going to pull two frames from this colony just to keep them from swarming. And this comes from a small nuke coming through winter, small for no reason of her own. And we just gave her the ability to express her brilliance and her true potential by giving her just a boost of bees. And if someone would shake that colony out because they're small, they're missing the point that, you know, they're small for other circumstances other than her performance. Obviously she's good, Obviously these bees are set up well. Oh, I missed her again. She must be on the side wall in there somewhere. But our job as a beekeeper is to be able to identify true potential and you know help them express it. Promote the brilliance within your apiary. And we can't be superficial by the way we look and manage our operations. We have to involve a little skill and talent and be able to, you know, extract the core of this apiary to make it produce and make us a lot of money. <clears throat> There's no use if I would have just shaken that colony out into the grass, I would have lost that potential and I would have had to go replace that. And that's very costly. I mean, we're in this to make money, we're not in this to spend money. So I was able to utilize the strength I had within my operation and promote the brilliance within my operation to bring everything together. And now those guys are going to make me a boatload of money and that colony that gave that split away to that is able to, you know, we've already done our split work on that colony. We don't have to worry about doing any more reduction on there. We can just send it straight into the flow. So that's just a little trick I wanted to point out and just continue my argument on as beekeepers, we need to be able to focus on what's going on. And with such a limited amount of information we have as we go into these colonies, we have to be able to do everything we can to be able to read these nests and, you know, 
act accordingly. Before I run out of battery here, just look at the loads of pollen coming in this nest. Of course, now they stop. Streams of yellow. And orange. And Carrie says orange. All that wealth, grabbing every bit of it. Promoting brilliance within the operation also means you have to make a real tough call as you're going through, identifying all the poor colonies and basically getting rid of them. We haven't quite got queen cells going yet. If we had cells, I would take these cold units and just condense them into a nuke and take them out to the, kill a queen and take them out to the mating yard but we're not quite there yet, so I'm coming across some uh, uh, poor colonies and basically what we're doing is we're either killing off the queen and merging it with the small one or basically just shaking them out. So I wanted to show you that not everything in my apiary is sunny days. So I'm going through this hive and this is a, an older queen. Smoker's gone out on me. Uh, so I'll, I'll just quickly go through this. I won't need smoke for this anyways. These guys aren't that bad of a mood. So I'm going through, I'm looking, I'm trying to find a bird nest, and I'm seeing a lot of pollen. Which is fine. A little bit smaller of a hive. I had identified it as a smaller hive. So we automatically go down and take a look at these ones. I come upon this brood nest, and that's a full frame of brood. Except it's real shotgun. It's real spotty. Not really, not really appealing to me. Looking, I can't find the queen. So you'll notice it's just, it's just, you know, sp sporadic, kind of shotgunny. You'll notice. Uh, a drone laid there. Well, I wouldn't even count that as a full frame of brood. And here, these are just kind of scattered. They got pollen all thrown all over the place. There's no real organization to the nest. This side, a little more brood, but just you know, they're emerging, so this is mature brood, and it's just very sporadic, not very interesting at all. I'm not seeing any eggs. I'm not seeing very well organized. Usually you have your brood nest and then you have it rimmed with pollen, rimmed with nectar. I'm not seeing that. It's just very sporadic, very unorganized. A little bit of a hum to this colony. So this colony is poor. This is what you would call a poor colony. It's not doing very well. Actually, it looks like it's failed already. I doubt she's even in here. I don't see any evidence of her being around for the last two weeks. So these are the colonies I'm not going to invest any time or resources into. Basically just going to shake them out. So I went through and I tried to find her and I couldn't find her. I'll just find a smaller hive within the yard and tap the bees out in front of that colony. And these bees might drift back. They might drift back into this colony or they might walk into the colony I tap them out into. Um, but basically we just, this colony is finished. So I'm gonna take these brood frames and I'm gonna salvage them. I'm gonna put them into another box or sort them into another hive just to make use of those bees. So we don't want this in the apiary anymore. Uh, we're gonna call it out. We're not gonna invest any money into it because these are getting older bees. Uh, something's going on in here. We don't want to promote that or 
just continue that on, shake it out, and you know, we'll just leave this empty spot for another colony to come down and sit down into. that she's more of a red she's got a golden butt but she's got a red thorax you give a damn that we're here yeah anyway, I want to see you hurry up Pretty, pretty. She last year's queen? I believe so, yep. Yeah. As far as I know, I have two of them. From last year. Good morning. Running a little bit late this morning. Getting going. Should be able to get going here by seven o'clock or so. <clears throat> Typically, I like get to get at least going by six. I've been running by five thirty for the last three, four weeks now, or something like that. I have a little bit of a philosophy. When uh, things get busy or, you know, problems occur, the best thing you can do, the easiest thing that you can do to be able to relieve the situation is simply just get up early and just start the day earlier. Go as hard as you can through the day until you drop. And it's, it doesn't really sound like much, but it helps tremendously like you add another hour hour and a half sometimes two hours in the beginning of the day and if something doesn't go right then at least you have you can extend that day on into the late hours and just take care of business <clears throat> just simply showing up to work is half the job I'm gonna give you an early morning tip this morning I'm just pulling off some of the merger splits they're going to go fill up some dead spots and take a look at this. This is something I'm always watching for. Move the bees. This time of year, um, the bees are building drone comb and uh, they build them within all the spaces. So whenever we're doing our work with the hives, we tend to break open the drone comb. And that's just something we're watching for all the time as beekeepers. As we survey for mites, 
Uh, we're always washing. We're always washing to be able to count the infection within the colonies. Uh, but, but as we go, you're also looking for drone comb that you break open. Mites just love to reside in drones because mites or the drones take a little bit longer to develop so the mites can reproduce a little bit longer within the drones. So they like to target the drones or so they say. So when you break open the drone combs like that just take a quick peek and if you don't see any mites running around then your colony is good. Don't rest your surveillance on that just keep an open eye for it because if you do see mites in those drones that's probably bad news and you better you know take the next step to uh, take a sample to see what your infection levels are. So that's Ian's tip of the day. Constant fight to keep these empty spots full. Just filling them any way I can to bring my yard back together. Got to manage these yards full. And every time we identify a weak or poor performance, we cut them out. And then we bring in youth and excellence to fill in those spots. Keep those places productive and making money for me. So we can't allow those hives that are failing to just kind of linger within my apiary because they're not going to make me any money. They're just going to cost me money as we invest into them. We cut those ones out and we drop in the pure brilliance that we are promoting within our stock. So we're digging into the builder to find some graftable Breeder. larvae. Pardon me? Breeder. Oh. He's a builder. Right. This is not a builder. He's a breeder. This is the eight of clubs. So we don't have a tag on this one, except for that, the two stars, the blue tag, another flag. So something's going on in there that we like. So we do it the old fashioned way and we just dig through the colony till we find something that's suitable. Is she pushed right out to the wall? She's, she's well, she's oh, just she on is. this, yeah. She's a beauty. That's her mama. We have this nicely filled with uh, nectar. And if you can see, you can't really see. But she has dominated her space in this frame. She's about to start laying in this area here. So those bees are, are behaving, unless there's eggs in there now. No, there's no eggs in there. So they're just providing space that she needs there. No, she's got a few eggs. Which is the, what we like to see in a colony, well organized like this. The queen is demanding her space. <clears throat> Have we uh, grafted from her before? Nope. First time? First time to shine. So I can't see what's in there. So that's a frame full of mature larvae. Wow, that's solid. That's, that's what you want to see is, you won't see this through the camera, but you want to see groups of liked aged eggs or larvae or brood. Just all the same age and grouped together. Very well organized and placed. Yeah, right there. Right in here. Okay, so that's exactly right. So here's mature larvae. 
and it gets younger as it goes out, kind of like in a semi-circle, right? Mm -hmm. And then it just kind of moves itself younger all the way out. So there's a frame to graft from. You have lots there. It looks like it. Oops. I need 90. You need 90. <laughs> a big number. What's the other side of that frame look like? Full of pollen. Yep. So give him a second box to lay in. You uh, set that over there. So she will be moving up shortly, I'm sure. Yeah, as they're emerging, they're packing it full of pollen. That's why she's moved up there so soon. All that resource. Beautiful brood. Very nice. Nice and solid. They almost need pollen traps on here. How many frames of brood do they have here? <clears throat> wall to wall by the looks of it. <clears throat> We're not going to pull them down too much. We'll just keep bothering them as we pull a graftable larvae from them. Very well fed, ready to work for us. Which bunch of builders are you after today? You are on a second row, right? Yeah, second row. <clears throat> I am gonna bother you to, let's see how you did yesterday. These were grafted yesterday. on that frame, eh? Nope. But I'm seeing most acceptance. You can see the royal jelly just being drawn down and all those cells just starting to. I think these guys need a little bit of a boost. Yeah. We'll maybe give them some bees. Let's see what the other one looks like. See the royal jelly coming down in them. It's nice. Just started. Tiny As we're working through the builders, we're noticing that uh, the builders might be a little bit shy on bees. So We've been rotating a brood frame throughout the builder just to provide some fresh young bees to them. But uh, we decided to shake some more bees into them just to make sure they have all they need to be able to draw out these queen cells. So we picked a yard, we picked this yard, and we're just going through. And uh, we're just basically just skimming all the surplus bees out of the yard. So we have one box made up. I might have filled this up a little bit too much. So there'll be four frames of foundation in there, packed full of bees, and we'll give one frame per builder. So that should really bulk them up. And we're working on another one here right now. This yard is a pretty good yard. It's giving us a lot of bees. You notice there's a bit of a jungle. We gotta get out here with the mower. But we're working through and filling up our second box, and that should provide us all the bees we need uh, to be able to boost these builders up. These hives are, I mean, I'm just absolutely surprised, not surprised, just impressed on how full these hives are. I mean, boxes of bees, we're tipping back boxes of bees all day. These guys aren't swarming it. But you'll notice a lot of drone cell on the bottom and cups but they're just getting ready they're in just 
it's getting into the spirit to swarm off. So we're skimming those bees off to boost up the builders. So there's no problem here. The rest of the yards, we've been putting out seconds. We, depending on the yard, we have 50 to 75% of the hives up into seconds now. And just the way the year is, we're a little bit behind. Normal year, we'd be pretty much on time. But this year, we're just a little bit behind. So we're preparing those hives that we're doubling up to further skim off some nukes from them. Uh, so it's gonna be a lot of work ahead of us, but these hives are growing and it's amazing how fast that they are progressing forward. And we just gotta try to keep up to them now. So one of the reasons why we're boosting up these builders is because we want to ensure there's a lot of young bees within the colonies. Then that means we need every single stage, every single age of bee within those builders at all times to properly feed those uh, developing queens as we build these queens throughout the process. And we're building 45 cells per cell right now. Every start's 45 cells every four days. So we have to make for damn sure we have an abundance of young bees uh, introduced into those colonies at all times. One of the reasons, one of the ways we're doing that is with uh, introduction of brood frames. So we just have a constant emerge of young bees into that colony at all times. And the other way is just to smack a whole lot of bulk bees, shake them into the colonies just to make sure that they got everything that they need. So anyways, we're spending a little bit of time here uh, collecting these bees just to making sure that we have everything that these builders need to build to properly draw out their cells and by the looks of it by the way the, uh, the the builders are accepting the cells and the way they're building them out they they must be pretty well stocked but we're just trying to carry that momentum forward um, into you know we want to get the first week second week uh, almost push into the third week before we shut them down cells are ready today so today is the first day of the split so we have prepared these big colonies earlier on in two boxes so the queen has full reign over both these boxes so we doubled up the boxes of bees earlier on and we arranged the top box as a split so we had two foundation on each side and then we put six frames of comb in the center so honey on each side and then four empties so we kind of enticed that queen to come up and lay within those little those four frames and that's basically what we're finding right now is that queen has laid three to four nice little frames up top here so simply put what we're doing is we're coming through and we're shaking all these bees down into the bottom box to make sure that queen is isolated in the bottom unless we find her when we're shaking then we can just put things back together but we want that queen in the bottom box we'll put an excluder in here the bees will come back over that brood and we'll come back either tonight or tomorrow morning and we'll just pull these frames out into a nuke and take it to our mating yard.
Uh, this two jacket situation has kind of got me a little bit discouraged. So we just have to plan our day accordingly. We're just on the anticipation of a split and we have cells ready to be placed well yesterday so now we're going to be placing them hot. Looks like it'll be supper so hopefully we don't have any early hatchers. And this anticipation of warm weather just keeps eluding us so I can't wait on that fresh nectar to come in. I gotta these hives as we're tipping them back yesterday they just keep getting lighter and lighter and lighter as they're developing these monster nests. They, their demand on sugar is quite extreme so we're sending the syrup tank around just to splash a bit of syrup into these colonies just to make sure they keep going we can't allow them to sit back a little bit this time of year they have to keep moving forward they have all the pollen they need in there it's got to maintain the amount of sugar that's available for them so we'll be open feeding some of those and just a little bit we're just splashing just a little bit of syrup just to help maintain that rim of syrup around the nest. We're not feeding to store, we're feeding to just splash at them, just to stimulate, just to keep them going. That's very important. Sugar is expensive. We don't want to store it. We just want to use it as a tool to be able to maintain momentum. And we'll do that. I'll just send a guy around and we're just going to fill up a tote half full just to get some more sugars into the colony. They'll be flying today, but not very much. So they'll be able to grab a little bit of that sugar. And if this cool, cloudy weather resumes, then we'll just go around again in about three or four days and just splash a little bit more at them, just to try to maintain this momentum that we've established in, established in these nests. So at any rate, hopefully the weather forecast improves, we get the warm weather, and we can access this free stuff out there in, across the countryside. This afternoon we're picking nukes. Got a bunch on the truck already. And we're just getting in the gear of things. I was just saying to Carrie, it's funny how every year it feels like I haven't done this before and we have to figure it out again but things are actually coming together quite nicely what we're doing is uh, well we shook the queen down and now everything up top here is uh, ready to harvest for a split and we're just making up two brood frame splits with the honey uh, some extra comb a little bit of bees and can you see that brood frame that's a beautiful frame so that's going to emerge into a box full of bees. So it's supposed to get cold tonight and if anything there's a lot of brood up top here that she laid and it, maybe they're just a touch shy on bees. So I don't know what to think about that. So what we're probably going to do is we're going to take these uh, nukes and we're going to set them inside overnight just to let them settle in, we'll drop some queen cells in there and maybe take them out in two days after that queen's emerged. See if that works. We've never done that before, so this will be a trial and error. And I just want to protect that brood just in case there isn't enough bees in there, but I'm looking down and these girls are organizing themselves quite nicely. See, that one might be a little shy on bees to cover the brood. One, two, three, four seams of bees. So I'm sure they would be able to figure themselves out to, uh, to handle the cool temperature coming tonight. But uh, I, think, I think we might just give this a try. We have the facility for it. So we're gonna make, uh, we're gonna hit up, I think we have 51 cells we have to use up today. So we'll make up 51 nukes, uh, go through a couple yards pick those up and then uh, bring them to the honey house and as we bring them in uh, I'll get Carrie to drop a cell in each one. We'll park it in the corner, turn off the lights, let them sit there for a couple days and then nice and quietly and gently pull them back out uh, early one morning and set them down into its mating yard.
see that queen cell. Textbook. Just playing with my bees. So it froze last night, got pretty cold. The day's gonna warm up and it looks like warm weather ahead now. These nukes are just roaring. And the queens inside, I imagine, will be hatching now. We're scheduled to hatch uh, at noon. an interesting color. Got a crawler. This is day 11. So how much uh, jelly is in that cell? It's right Quite full of jelly. Yeah. So that means they would have filled that That's jelly. Right, lady. Yeah, yeah look she's at that. still got spare. She is They must have filled that jelly right down that cell. So we can't call them from that. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, that's so nice. Look at that. Can I see a little queenie again? Wow, what a queen, Carrie. It's my favorite color, too. If I could see colors. Well, you're going to be welcomed into a new little nest. You better get the rest of them in there before you get any more crawlers. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to leave you to it. Here is our bee yard, mating yard. Oh, we worked hard today to make these up. <clears throat> and I'm moving just a spare little scrap yard to another place. In. No, she wants to climb up instead of down. I know, I know. Right in the side wall. Come on, go. Wow. Still quite full of royal jelly, but. Yeah. Perfect engineering. Out in the yards first thing this morning, come across this colony here, and I notice that the, uh, the hive isn't really performing very well. This is a flag. This colony has fallen backwards, okay? So I come across this colony and I found the queen, and I looked at her laying pattern, and it was, it's, you know, it's chugging along, but it's nothing stellar. And I found the queen, and actually I've already killed her off, but she's uh, she's pretty old and worn out. She's at the end of her life. So, as goes my mandate, anything that falls back, anything that starts to fail, anything that isn't performing, 
we go in and we kill the queen and then we simply take this hive and we nuke the whole thing out. I'll be able to make one, two, two, maybe three nukes out of this hive by taking it right down. And I have three fresh queen cells ready just to rear this colony and, and re-establish its vigor. There's no use me keeping this colony in circulation. I mean, by allowing this colony just to sit here and linger, not only costs me money, the inputs we put into it, but it's taking up space in my, within my yard. It's not gonna produce me any honey. It's just gonna cost me money and cost me time. So these colonies we target, we call them, and we throw all this back into the mating yard and start them fresh. So that's the plan, and I'm sticking to it. Today we have three yards left to split off, and we'll be done the first round split. So it's nice to be able to knock off uh, this first round right off the mark. These hives have progressed, they've kind of leaped forward on us, and if we weren't on time here, I think we'd be running into swarm issues. But we've gone through and we just slapped down these colonies, just harvested a bunch of strengths from them, give them some extra space and it'll be holding them. Uh, next week we'll be going around further skimming and then after that we'll be going around and just, you know, fussing with the hives just to bring them up, bring them down, just kind of equalizing out a little bit. So it's good to be able to have the weather which has allowed us to get a whole bunch of work done these last few days. Extremely long days. Uh, we've been keeping up to the cells, so that's good. We haven't had to pinch too many off. And everything seems to be chugging along here quite nicely. The only uh, challenge, I guess I would say, is, uh, well, making up these splits, we've been always fighting to be able to find enough bees to be able to cover the brood as we pull them into the splits. I think that's a result of our cold spring. Uh, these hives have just, you know, lagged and slow and confined for such a long time. And then finally the hives experience warmth and the queens, it's almost like they went for broke. And she stretched that nest out. She stre stretched it out to pretty much the max capacity of that hive. And those bees took every single one of those eggs and turned it into larvae and progressed it into developing out into bees. So we have sheets of brood in these colonies and that's what we're harvesting off through these splits. It's just because she stretched this nest out so far that you know they're using absolutely every colony dynamic within that hive to be able to maintain that brood. And we're pulling off this brood into splits and kind of changing the house, changing all those dynamics around, maintaining that work, maintaining all that brood. A lot of, some of the cases we can't pull enough bees from the colony to be able to help out, um, you know, hold maintenance on all that work we're trying to capitalize on. So we've been having to go in and pull down uh, other units just to harvest a few bulk bees to be able to provide enough to maintain all that brood. One thing that's been helping us is it's been 30 degrees for the last few days, so that's, that'll help a smaller bee population manage a larger nest. Uh, and it's just, I guess I'll wait and see. I'll see in about two weeks whether or not we are able to balance everything out properly or not, just by seeing if we uh, wasted some brood to chilling. But that'll come. We'll see if we'll see how things pan out after the work just kind of follows through here. The first day we started split, I actually brought the first round of bees inside to sell them just to protect them from the cold. And then after that, we're seeing like a day after that, we're seeing 17s, 15 nighttime lows, daytime highs of 30. So it's been just like a whiplash on trying to manage this workload and trying to keep ahead of the growth and just maintaining all those colony dynamics we need to pay attention to to be able to allow continued progress forward. Uh, but I think after today I'm going to feel just a little bit relaxed and relieved to be able to get through this first round and to hammer down these highs without experiencing too much swarming. No, not too much. We didn't experience any swarming. 
and then just kind of next week go through, take a little bit more time and just even out these colonies, skim off more splits and maybe enjoy the work just a little bit more. This is one of my favorite mating yards, basically because I get the best uh, acceptance from this yard. And it's laid out just textbook. I mean, we have, this is a gravel pit, right? An old gravel pit. So a clear open space. These hives have access to clear open sunshine. I have a windbreak all the way along here. It's kind of in a bit of a de depression, so it's nice and calm down here all the time. Lots of natural forage around. And I think more specifically, well, I have a bee yard in this gravel pit, but I don't necessarily pick that bee yard as being useful for mating with these queens. I mean, the bees will do what they want, but typically this, uh, this area will, will be set up with a drone congregation site from that yard, because the drones typically fly uh, the least furthest. They stick pretty close to the yard or the hive that they fly out of and they go up and form a congregation site somewhere and I imagine it'll be somewhere along this area here because they like depressions like that they like elevation drops for some reason and they just pick the areas like this but these queens I imagine these queens will fly up and fly away because their strategy is to do more time flying to the congregation site then uh, hanging up, hanging around up in it. So I have yards um, a mile that way, a mile and a half that way, and this way two miles, I guess that's a little bit farther away. But uh, these queens, I imagine, will be booting it that way towards my other yards, which they will be establishing the drone congregation sites within those areas. So the queen will fly, what's the math on it, like something like 10 minutes to get to the drone congregation site, spend roughly three, five minutes up mating with the drone. She does it very fast, just like pop, 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 she's mating. And then she flies about 10 minutes back. So she's flying roughly 25 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes uh, on her mating flights. Whereas you think of the drones, they fly maybe five minutes 
and then they're spending, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes up in the congregation site, then they fly back, you know, two, three, five minutes to get back into the hive to refuel. And that strategy, I guess, just provides the drones with the ability to hang out in the congregation sites more often. The strategy for the queen is to fly away and mate with as many drones as she can from, you know, another colony. So she's, there's less inbreeding. So that's pretty much, I think, the strategy behind that. Very interesting. Now I got these girls set out here. I'm just looking through a few and <clears throat> typically I make these nukes up a little bit stronger. Well, that one's all right. That's about what I want to see, three to four frames of bees. But uh, if we have all this brood and we're trying our best to be able to gather enough bees to be able to cover all this brood and just so we don't waste any to chilling. When you get a little colony, it's a little bit skinny. This one's skinny. So obviously there's one frame of brood, one and a half frames of brood and bees covering that. So I'm counting one, two, three seams of bees. So that, that should be all right. These bees can maintain the work and allow that brood to emerge. Uh, it'll look a lot different in, you know, seven to 10 days. This has been a little bit of a struggle, just finding enough bees. You know, you just open up the lid and it just, first thing you think is, you're just a little skinny. And if there's any type of drift, uh, it's not gonna do the small ones any good. So we've done the best we can. We just gotta stop fussing, we'll drop the cells. And if there is losses, we'll just take the losses because of that.
Holy, is it a hot day today. Just love the heat. Working through the yard and we come across a hive. It's been marked as blue, but the front we're finding a little chalk brood mummies. Tip the colony back and the bottom board is littered with them. So I'm digging into this colony and I'm not seeing anything that really excites me. Especially the brood nest here, I'll give you a... She's still going, she's in here, she has about eight frames of brood. But as you can see, chalk brood has really taken the edge off this colony. So either there's a stress event that comes through and they never recovered and chalk brood just took hold. Or, I mean, it's just poor genetics. And I'm leaning towards more towards poor genetics because there isn't another hive throughout the last two weeks that we've been working that I've seen with chalk root. And this one is just littered with it. So what we are going to do with this colony is we're not going to allow this just to sit here, propagate bad genetics and just kind of linger and not make me any money. So what we're going to do is we're going to nuke it out. So we're going to find the queen, we're going to kill her off. And then I'm going to divide this colony into two. We're going to throw it to the front, uh, drop two queen cells in the mating yard, and start them fresh. So we'll just hunt through, look for the queen. I've been through once already, I can't find her. So maybe we'll find her this time. So I'm just simply splitting the colony in half. There's eggs in here, so she's got to be close. And if I can't find her, we'll just drop the queen cell in and let the virgin take care of her. It's nice to kill her off though, because I want to know that she's gone. Hey, look at that brood nest. It's just terrible. There's even chalk brood mummies in there yet. They haven't had a chance to clean them out. It's not good. So I can't let a hive like this linger in my operation because it just takes up a space within the yard. And we're going to be putting money into, you know, to promote the growth of this colony and it's not going to respond. And it's just going to sit here and use up equipment that I need somewhere else. And it's not going to give me any type of payback whatsoever. So that's one, two, three, four in there. And I'll leave four in this one. Oh, I can't find her. Where in the world? Oh, there she is. She's a pretty little thing. How old is she? Well, this colony's been going since 2016, so she's obviously not that old because she looks fairly young. But she doesn't have what we want within our colony, so unfortunately, she gets taken care of. Okay, so that solves that. So I have five frames in here, lots of brood, got some honey going on. I don't have any nuke boxes to build to put this into, so. We are using our single boxes as our hive and we're just filling the empty space up with foundation. Two nukes made up. So where the old colony sat, we took apart. We have two nukes we're going to set out into the mating yard to uh, 
to mate and start that colony fresh. If you look at the bottom board here, just littered with chalk brood. Not healthy at all. So that's what I want to get out of the operation. I, I want to eliminate that. And we identify units that uh, just show that they're failing. Just the edge is taken off them. I don't want to promote that. I want to promote the pure brilliance within my stock. So I get them out and I start them fresh at the start. And I'm going to find a nuke. I have a yard of nukes over on the other side of the apiary and I'll come and drop a nuke in there. And she will light that spot up and make me some money. These hives, these hives were just set down here. This is robbing activity. These nests have to kind of settle in before they start defending themselves. And the pressure of bees is just a little bit too great here. I have a very hungry yard over there. So I don't think I'm going to be setting any more hives to be set up in this yard. Just the robbing pressure is just a little bit too great. Night will fall, these hives will settle into their nests. I don't have plugs in these guys, that doesn't help things either. And they'll they'll settle into their home and then they'll start defending themselves. Defend or die, I guess. So tomorrow morning things will be a little bit better. These are just freshly placed out. But we are at the end of that magical time where we can get into these hives, work with them, split them off. You know, we can kind of press our boundaries a little bit where we're stripping resource from these colonies and not have to worry about situations that fall like this. So when robbing starts to occur, then you start to have to follow different rules. It's not as easy to split up part hives pretty much pretty much ends the splitting season which is fine because we are two days away from being done anyways we got to get some feed out captain's log start date June 13th, 2020. The ants have attacked the beehives. We are out helping dad kill them. Hopefully they don't ruin, ruin the year. This is my drones. Got some drones in the queen cage. <laughs> Got them named. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna spot check to see if the queen can move. Up here, let's make more space. This yard is particularly bad for ants, so we're checking the, these little nicks for ant damage. We haven't found any yet. It's like honey in there. Yeah, that's dandelion honey. Yeah. And the queen has emerged, see? She's chewed her way out of the front, at the top. So that's a success. This hive I had to save from ants a while back. So we poisoned underneath the pallet. It looks like it's helped them. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Let's see the brood nest. As brood that's just about to emerge. They're very well stored with honey. This is dandelion honey. I wonder what it tastes like. You wanna try? <laughs> Will you risk um, taking off your mask? I don't well, want to take off. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we're going to find her. Probably in the last one. There she is. Where? A little beauty. Oh, yeah. Underneath this pile. Oh, there yeah, is. there she is. Look at that gorgeous little queen. So she's shrunk she keep, down. She's like hiding underneath the other bees. She's going to be taking a mating flight very shortly. She hasn't yet, I don't think. Looks, you know, she's all slender and sl slim down. 
Huh? Yeah. Those wings are She's like to trying to hide underneath all the bees. She's a little bit shy. So we better put her back down. Yeah. There's your little queenie. So do you want to try some dandelion honey, Charlie? Sure. Yeah. I'll try some. You want to try some too? Yeah, I want to try some. You got to take your mask off. This is some nice dandelion honey. Mm, that's pretty good. Straight from the fields, straight from the pasture. Wait, how, where do I get it? Right, right here is the kept. A bit more. It's pretty good. That's pretty good, eh? Yep. Mm. Why don't you make jars out of this? Well, we don't have enough to build to harvest, so we let the bees use it to feed themselves. Here, I want some too. Mm, it's really good. Go try it a little bit more. more. Straight from the comb. Ooh, let's look at that stuff. Mm. Mm. We should come out here every morning <laughs> with a knife to put this in our toast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Wonder if the bees would mind if we did that. <laughs> hey, that's our honey. Ooh, like on we should take this frame home with us. Yeah. Yes, can we? Um, I don't have a space taker for that. We could. Mmm. Mm, mm. No, it's all good. We well, need to we put this leave. on our toast. <laughs> Dandelions are annoying in the mm. yard, but they're delicious. All right. Well, maybe give it back with these. We need to continue our adventure down the line and look for ant damage. You can really taste the difference. Like Maybe we'll run into one. <laughs> That's super good. Spray it. You spray underneath the cord. See, they're just starting to come in. Spray it all over? Yeah. A little more. Can't the bees just sting the ants? Spray this board. Yeah, but the ants can sting the bees. A little bit more. And paralyze them. There we go. That should help them out. Let's see if there's trouble with the next one. Take these guys first. Uh, yeah, there's a couple. There's a little treat underneath. Just starting to invade. There you go. Poor bees. Okay, let's see if the bird is going to be nice. Oh, this is a nice one. Here it is. Here, use the hive tool. Just kind of pry it up just a little bit. See a hole through it? Yeah. Well, she's she's right there. Good. Yeah, she's been released. Yeah. So these guys are good. Yeah, these guys have quite a bit. Let's try to get the cell up without oh, yeah. it sticking. Just to see if we go. Oh, good. Are these all dandelions? We're going 100% so far for emergence. Pardon me. Yeah. Is this all dandelions, honey? Oh, uh, there's wildflower in that too. All the ant situations. Oh, there's right. a couple of ants. Yeah, there's yeah. actually quite a bit. Oh, there's a couple of ants. So far. Okay, they're a little smaller. I put the cell in a little deeper. Whoops. Yeah, I see it. Kill the ants. There's mean little Yeah, ants. there's an ant up here. Kill it. And let the duckies eat it. Well, How's Leia doing today? I'm so doing good. Yeah. How are your drums? Do good. So windy.
sounds of success. Good deal. We do put the lid on yeah. and then we put this on. Do I keep it? Do we I put that in the plug so we know which one to, to clean. So hopefully that stays there. So we'll come back today and put a cell on there. Yeah. That's one out of 50. That's the last one. Out. Yeah. Woo! All right. Let's go to the next yard. You guys, ready? Time to go to the next yard. Kay. To the bee mobile. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of getting a little bit worried. These last few weeks have been terrible mating weather. It's so windy, and I can't see how this queen can possibly get out there and properly mate in all this wind so I'm not sure what to think of this so I had Carrie uh, go and do another graft yesterday just to maybe tidy up some failures that we might have come down the pipeline here so I'm not exactly sure what to expect I know the Queen <clears throat> so they tell me this is what they tell me the drones they want to spend more time up in their congregation site so they fly maybe three minutes and get up there and wait always flying the queen she wants to get away from her hive so she her strategy is to fly further for a longer distance and then spend less time up in the congregation site to mate and then fly the distance back and those are two different strategies the drones are just more available by being up there more often instead of flying and the queen is able is able to get find new genetics by flying away somewhere else and it only takes her a few seconds to mate, like pop, 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 and she's mated with five or six drones and she'll fly back to her field, go back out if she needs to. So I'm not sure, through this wind, going into these colonies, they're very stagnant, they're very slow. There's not a lot going on. And I often wonder whether or not that queen makes some of her decision whether to fly or not depending on how active that colony is. If this colony is really active and bringing in resource and excited, maybe she gets out there and mates. If she can't fly and she's running out of time, I often wonder if she would just go straight up to the closest congregation site and mate, pop, 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 and get her business done, and get back down to start laying. I often wonder if that's maybe, that has to be what has, has to have happened. If that's the case, that's fine because in actual fact, she doesn't have to fly a distance to be able to get away from her nest because we are um, we are pulling those eggs and we are creating those queens um, in no relation to the hives within that mating yard she's, she's at. So if that hive is in that mating yard and I have that bee yard just off to the side, it won't make any difference for genetic wise, for diversity wise, if, if she mates with that hive in the, that yard close yard or if she flies a further distance to another yard, which is basically the same thing anyways. So in the natural world it make a difference, but for our case, for argument's sake, she'd just be as far ahead if she went straight up and mated with that closest congregation site. And all my mating yards are fairly calm so she'd be able to fly within the mating yard and get up and mate within that local area, but there's no way in hell she's going to be flying through these 50, 60 click winds we've been having for the last two weeks. It's just absolutely insane. 
So these are all dynamics completely out of my hand. We are completely out of control of what's going to go on here. Get back in there. We just kind of have to let nature take its course. And that's the most frustrating thing about this business, especially for me, because I like to control things. I'm very controlly. You know, you manage, you manage, you manipulate. You get everything working like clockwork. You know, I focus on the integrity of these colonies and I'm promoting the absolute brilliance, pushing the boundaries and making these, well, not making, but, you know, guiding these bees to promote absolutely every ounce of excellence within their achievements. And then we go and we make a bunch of queens and we completely leave it up for nature, completely leave it up for chance. So it's kind of hard to adjust. Ah, you guys are not cooperating. So I better go set these guys out in the mating yard right now because they're not really appreciating what I'm doing here. This is our last graft that we put in. Uh, we did this Sunday. Or after, boy, they sure consumed that. Was that a half patty put in? I put in a third. Yeah, I gotta put my veil on. These guys are a little cranky. We had a wicked storm come through yesterday. I just want to check the cells to see what we have going. These are going to be used for uh, what do you call it? Backups, backup. Backups, backup. Yeah. <laughs> Just in case we have some bad luck with our mating, I wanted to be able to salvage the nukes, which has a shit ton of bees in them, so they don't just simply get tossed into another nuke, so we can utilize them. So this builder is getting a little bit old. I just want to see if... Boy, that is white wax. Look at the jelly in those. So this builder has been going since the 17th. And we last time we boosted this one, well, we quit boosting because we shut them down. All the rest in the yard are shut down. No, you boosted this one though, didn't you? Uh, they had two brood frames instead of one. I didn't have to boost this one because bright yellow we had drift. Okay, so, so these guys have a lot of bees. In. I'm looking for white wax. Those are some very white cells. So these bees, uh, hypo, what, phalange, what do you call those glands? Hypophalangeal gland. Hypo for phalangeal. Phalangeal. Okay, Carrie knows how to say that. <laughs> we obviously have reactivated those. They are building. There is no nectar flow right now, so they're into the sugar, which I can't oh. see. Might have to put a little more sugar in there. But they were just about done building those cells anyways. Nice and nice. Two blanks on that one. That's pretty good. That's pretty typical for you, actually. They're into the patty, so they're just devouring this protein. I just love it. Look at that. I think I got the consistency right on this one. Mm -hmm. uh, 82 cells we'll have ready on next now. Thursday. So that, that, that timing's perfect, because if we start checking back in some of these nukes that... As we work all next week, we'll have 82 cells available to fix up some failures. So that's just a little bit of insurance, and we'll go with that.
So we just started going through the nukes and checking back on them to, uh, to look for queen acceptance. We've gone through the first 100 so far and we're rushing them just a little bit. Uh, what we're finding is, well, we did 50 that first day and if you'll remember, it was getting really cold that night and I was afraid of I didn't have enough bees because the colonies had really stretched themselves out, reared a lot of brood, kind of pressed the boundaries on how much that nest could actually maintain with so few bees. So when we took off the split, I just felt we had, we didn't have a lot of bee coverage on those brood combs. So because it was getting cold that, that night, I moved them inside, dropped the cells into those colonies inside, and then uh, after a couple days after the virgins emerged, we brought them back out to the yard to mate. And then the 50 after that, the next day, we just set straight out into the yard. So, what is going on? What happened? What we're, we're finding out here through our uh, checks is those 50 hives that we brought inside and dropped queen cells in, in the building, uh, we're going through and we're finding 80% uh, good laying queens. Uh, 5% are outright shakeouts because of drift issues or whatever happened. The queen never made it back. So 5% five out, five outright failures. We're finding 15% where we're having to leave that colony a little bit longer. Either just she's taking her time or, you know, out of that about 10% we're finding emergency cells are have emerged and those virgins are now established in that nest. So that 10% emergency cell situation, I think is directly attributed to uh, just the disturbance that we caused that hive as we pulled them out of the winter shed. After the virgin emerged in the hive, in the winter shed, we pulled them out into the yard. And just that disturbance, I think that 10% uh, queen loss was attributed to that. Because we're going through the second batch of 50 and we're not finding any type of uh, emergency cell problem. <clears throat> so that makes a bit of a difference. The second batch of queens we're going through uh, were like 80-85%. Uh, same thing about 5% that need, um, that didn't, or were unsuccessful obviously, and then the rest were just colonies that need a little bit more time but no emergency cell situation so I thought that was interesting I don't know if I'll do it again just because of that I just hate disturbing the colony as we're trying to mate them you know that virgin emerges and there's so many things so many variables going on inside that colony at that time that the best thing we can do is just leave them absolutely alone and let them settle that out and not, you know, shake that colony all the way down the road and drop her into the yard and just hope for the best. So it's, there's so many things going on that we're not aware of and we just have to let these hives sort this stressful period of time out. I think it's best to drop them in the yard, drop them a queen cell and leave them alone for two weeks or 18 days or 20 days afterwards. But the colonies that have checked as queen right and are laying are doing an absolute phenomenal job right now. It's quite exciting. Carrie's going through. We're seeing patches of, well, they've just come, on, come online. So there's eggs, like a frame, frame and a half of eggs. And any colony that's, you know, four or five days laying, we're starting to see the development of that brood nest. And it is just full of jelly it is you know pull the frame and it's pretty much glistening white in front of you it's quite exciting these bees are motivated to re-establish that nest and to drive forward so we're going to give these nukes you know it's going to take them roughly two and a half three weeks now to get through the first round brood cycle we're going to get them into that second one where she's going to start laying that second round of brood and at that time, we're gonna think about boxing these guys up, give them a little more space. So, you know, we're looking into July 
probably after we get through the whole apiary, uh, shake the bees down and get our third honey boxes on. So we'll be into that first week of July. Probably after that work, after the main apiary work is settled, we'll probably come do a round on the nukes and just provide them a little more space as this nectar flow starts to come in then anyways and as they start getting a little bit tight inside because of the all the surplus stores we want them then to so we want these nukes to build out we want that inflow of nectar to start coming in and just kind of pressure that nest just a little bit not a lot because we don't want them to swarm but just pressure it a little bit so then when we put the space on top they just take it all and put it up top and provide it to us as a uh, honey crop. Dropping cells into failed mating units. I uh, just got back from a yard that I run 65% success. And I'm not very happy with that. That is probably the worst I've done so far in queen rearing. It was just a yard of 50. So now I'm in a yard of 60 here. We checked 60 and we're running a 86% acceptance on this one. So hopefully things improve as we go. So these failed units, we drop, whoops, that doesn't help. We drop another cell into them. Only the units that look like they're viable Obviously this one is, it has one, two, three, four frames of bees yet in it. So they're likely young bees. So we will drop another cell into this failed unit. And try it again. This is why we are making backup cells just to salvage failed units like this. Uh, why did they fail? Who the hell knows? You know, something happened. It's quite frustrating, especially because I've been selling cells to a whole bunch of beekeepers in Manitoba here. And not just little bits, like hundreds at a time. And guys are starting to check. And I had an email this morning from one beekeeper. He said the first hundred he went through, a 97% acceptance. He's very happy with that. And I just got another email after I finished that terrible yard driving up here. He shot me an email and he went through his first 102 that he picked up for me. And he also got 97%. So I'm not sure if the bee gods are just toying with me and trying to play with my spirits a little bit. But I want 97%. Not sure why we're not getting it. So we started with, uh, you know... 80, then 82 percent, and then 65 percent, and this one's a, what is a 86 percent or something like that. So I think at this point I'm gonna be happy just to be at that 80 percent success mark, and you know just kind of prop up these uh, these failed units with another cell and just give it another shot. It is sure nice picking up these nukes when there's three to three success because there's no work. I mean, you just pick them up, put them on the truck. There's no shifting around. 
this yard is all right. It's just like Christmas morning when you're going out and uh, uh, checking for acceptance. You know, open the lid, you're not sure what to expect. And when you see that present of lush frames of brood, it's very gratifying. Three to three there. Three to three there. Three to three there. The center one was out. So I'll just have to find a spot. I'll have to find a uh, hive to fill in that center one. These ones I can just load right up. So that uses up the cells for the season. I'm down to one more. Well, except for Thursday, we have another 90 coming at us just for emergency. But that's this is the last of the main graft. And we run extras, so I it, I'd advertise these last ones, and they got snatched up pretty quick. So it's easy when making these videos. It's re really easy just to show the good, you know. But it's also equally easy, and I find this with myself, to just show the bad. You know, misery loves company. So what I try to do within my little blog project here is trying to show a balanced truth like what's going on so that involves sometimes um, showing negative aspects of what's going on but it also involves showing uh, the positive and I, I truly believe in balance I truly believe when any story is being told regardless of what it is there needs to be a balance to the story otherwise it won't resonate and that balance is extremely important build for just so we can get the big picture. So I'm out early this morning picking nukes and I was bitching and complaining a few days ago about inconsistency in our matings. It's just all over the map and it's frustrating because we put all this energy and time and energy and and we kind of set the plate to, to be able to achieve pure brilliance and just situations like environmental, weather, whatever, just kind of wipes it off the table. I blame the weather, plain and simple. So at any rate, we're out. I'm out picking up these nukes. This particular yard, we lost probably five just to the ants. They just overwhelmed them. But anything, we put a little bit of time and we treated underneath the hive with heavy duty permethrin, I think it was that active ingredient in the ant poison, and it had, it had allowed these hives to survive without this huge ant pressure on top of them. So it feels good. Carrie went through this yard the other day. She come back just beaming with 100% success. I mean, there we go. That's what we're after. That feels really good. Uh, I think we're gonna wait till Monday to go through the second half of nukes and I anticipate better success, more consistent success on our way forward. So hopefully that windstorm damage is, is done and away with. We've taken those hives that failed, put new cells into them. So we're looking at success moving forward. Uh, they'll be a little bit late, but you know, these, these nukes are pretty much, they're not being prepared for this year's production. They're being prepared for next year's. So we just got a bit of a foster environment to provide, you know, the, uh, the brilliance within those nests that we want them to achieve. And if we need to, we just give them time.
It's that time of year again. We are shaking bees down into the bottom box. We are inserting excluders. So I have the guys working behind me. I just get everything set up and we shake, shake, shake all the bees out of the top box, down to the bottom box and throw in an excluder. So things are looking all right. I haven't had to do a lot of evening out between colonies. Things seem to be right on target. I'm looking down and the bees are nicely in the top box. Moved up, the queen is like looking at, you know, she's laying in three, two, three frames. Just perfect. And just set up exactly the way I want to. So it's going pretty quick. I'll have the other two join me later. They're doing other things in the apiary. And once we get a full crew going on here, we'll be able to knock off a bunch of yards a day and hopefully get this done by the weekend. Look at the nectar down there. Shaking nectar. First day, first day honey flow. Yeah, shaking that up for you. It's time we started. Where do you see that? It's a start. Cells for an older builder. Well, you boosted this builder. With that root, it's still not, like, it's still, like, that's old bees still. Old bees. Look at that, eh? Oldie. Very white. You did a beautiful job. So, this is it. We have this many spoken for now within our own use. And Depending on our checks in the next couple days. Hopefully we don't need those, we can sell them. Yes. Okay, let's leave them alone. We we'll use them on Thursday. And then that's it. That's it for it. 35 degrees and the bees are bringing in nectar. We are shaking bees. We have another three yards to do before we're finally done putting excluders in. And these boxes are filling up. I don't know where all the nectar is coming from. I'm looking around, there's no flowers yet. Canola is just coming out. But it's just all the clover around the edges and it must be dripping nectar. So I just love getting a start like this because these hives are primed. And that canola, it's gonna be another two weeks before that blooms. We have canola close to blooming now. And I have a box full of honey already. So we're going through and we're trying to even things out the best we can. We see smaller ones which uh, need you know, a little bit of boost. So we'll sort a couple brood frames into these units by pulling from these units. So it's going fairly quick. I have two working with me today. And then I have two new recruits on the farm and I've sent carry out with four with three. So I carry out with three and they are putting supers on, they're putting thirds and absolutely everything. So hopefully by the end of tomorrow, we should have the whole apiary in three and just give these hives a little bit more space to be able to store this nectar. Checking back in one of the yards we shook down this morning and we have thirds on it now and on the way up here now all of a sudden I drove by three fields that are in bloom canola fields in bloom these hives like this is in the evening these hives are in full foraging right now they're getting to work 
you know, well before five o'clock in the morning. And I mean, they were working there. I bet you they work till about nine or 10 o'clock tonight. They're putting in a full day and they're able to do that because it's so hot. Nighttime low is above 20 degrees. It just allows these bees to work and work and work and work. So we shook these guys down. It was this morning and they're right to the top filling every seam with bees. So they're obviously cleaning the boxes, cleaning the frames, and they're up there storing. We'll take a look. Where these guys go. They're right full. I don't, whoop. I don't have my smoker with me, nor are my gloves. So I'm just gonna spare myself the punishment. I was going to pull a frame up to see if they're storing any nectar, but nah. I'll just assume that all that activity means positive things. Yeah, so you know, we have two more yards to put excluders in. Oh, she's a little bastard. And then by the end of tomorrow, we should have all the hives and thirds. Just like that, we got space for them right when they need it. So I'm hoping that uh, I wasn't too late in some of these where they're going to prepare for swarming. But there's only so much we can do. Oh, I just love it when a honey flow hits hard and fast like this. I mean, they're going, they're ready before the crops come in bloom. And now when the countryside turns yellow, we are going to have to stack boxes. And just like that, my apiary is in threes. Helps to have a crew which you can just send in every different direction and get a whole heck of a lot of work done. These hives we just pulled into a yard we're picking up pails which have been sitting here for a little while since uh, since we were feeding last time we haven't had a chance to come around to pick them up. And we're just poking around and this yard is finding nectar somewhere. They're up in the third. Let's see what we got. That foamy needs to be replaced. These were put on yesterday. And it is a third full of nectar already. Look at that, I don't know if you can see that. So they're storing nectar up in that third already. So that's good. We didn't get these thirds on a moment too soon. You can see the activity in the front of the hives. It's about 30 degrees today. So they're fanning to cool down the hive. But they're also, you can smell that sweet nectar. They're fanning to dry down all this nectar coming into the colonies. Very healthy looking organized nest. You can tell a nest that's busy actively storing nectar because they are spread all across every frame. I'm seeing good things. This is really, this is great. There's pollen coming in. We are making honey. Thirty millimeters of rain last night. Just absolutely ideal. I don't want to jinx myself by saying this but we missed the severity of the weather last night and we were provided with just absolutely the be most beautiful rain that you could ask for and it's a good thing we have our hives in three now because while well, we're going through and that bottom the second is full of honey and they've half filled that third already with nectar 
Now we've had all this rain. We're driving by fields that are just nicely, freshly in bloom. And we're gonna see a flow here. So hang on, we gotta get forths. What we're doing now is with my continued fuss throughout the apiary and my continued, you know, building of these colonies into massive honey producing units, what we've done is we've taken that queen, we've moved her down to the bottom box, put the excluder in, that job's done. We've added space on top, got the third going. Uh, but what we need to do is, because of all the disruption we provided by moving that queen down out of that second, there's brood in that second box. My crew is fairly trained with their eye and spotting uh, cells, but we cannot allow any type of queen development in that second box because she's gonna be trapped up, at, up there over the excluder and cause us headache later on when we try to pull this honey off to harvest. So what Carrie and I do is we go through very quickly and we just take a quick peek into that second box just to see if there's any developed queen cells. Uh, some of them are super seizure cells, right? Um, some of them are emergency cells because there is casualty to that queen. Like we try our hardest to uh, work these hives as carefully as we can, but we get going, we're working, we're going through the colonies pretty fast. We do occasionally kill a queen through this work. So in that case, we'll find emergency cells up into that second. We got to make sure those are all killed off and only leave the cells down the bottom. Basically what we're doing is, and I'll show you what, we take that third box off we shift it to the colony behind us. So we're kind of shifting bees back and forth. This helps with a little bit of merger. How many days are we after we shook this yard down? It was last week, eh? Yes. Yeah, so we're at least seven days, five days, seven days since we've moved the queens down. So we, if there's any trouble up top here with cells, <clears throat> we should be able to see the evidence very obviously with little peanut shaped uh, protrusions going down. So we just go through, leaf through. If we don't see anything back on top, if we see something, just strike it with a knife. Nothing's going on in this colony. All the larvae is too old to now develop into a queen. So it is good to go. We shall have no virgin trouble there at all. So on to the next hive. And it's basically just taking that third. This is just helping us <clears throat> with our lifting a little bit throw it back into the colony behind us. Those bees, you know, they're gonna maybe complain a little bit by all of a sudden being thrown on top of another colony. But there's like three, four frames of bees up there. They will mingle with the rest of them just as we merge back and forth through drop frames of bees back and forth. If you tip it back, you can see the cups at the bottom. The cups are not really of any worry. We like to strike them down anyways, just so those bloody bees don't bring eggs up into the top but you just kind of work through like pages in a book. That looks like cells to me. Nope, those are just very well-defined cups. Yeah, no eggs. Nothing in there, nothing going on. All the brood is mature. And we just flip the page in the book and nothing going on. That's what we want to see. So about half an hour later, I, out of this yard of 40, I struck down maybe three cells, which would have been a real pain in the ass when we try to come through and pull the honey off. So this work is pretty important work. It seems like a lot of fussing, but we have to make sure that there is no type of brood nest or virgin queen up in these top boxes as we're trying to pull these boxes away when we're trying to harvest them later on in July. Nothing screws things up like little virgins running around where you don't want them. So we're going through and find emergency cells every once in a while. So I have a 1% rule as we go through the colonies, as we do our work within the apiary, especially with this intensive work or we move the queen down and we're a little bit forceful with it. I do expect, I call it a 1% rule, where we do have casualties of these queens from time to time. 
and that 1% rule seems to be following suit through our work right now. We're through a few hundred highs already and we've found two. So there's my 1%. So we'd obviously accidentally killed this queen through our work for whatever reason it happens and they're making emergency cells now. And we've spotted that. So I've struck down all the emergency cells in this colony up in the top box. And I'm going to take that one frame, I'm going to move it down to the bottom. I don't want to disturb them too much. I'm assuming they're making emergency cells below. But I want to make sure they do have that resource of a new queen coming. So in about a week that queen's going to emerge here. And hopefully she'll go out, mate, come back and reestablish this colony. And, you know, salvage everything that's going on in here. And we'll check back maybe in a few weeks just to see the to update to see what's going on to see if she was able to mate properly and reestablish. And if she has, we'll just mark it as a uh, salvage. If not, just a casualty. And then you get going through colonies that a simple supersedure cell was missed. Beautiful little cell about to emerge. So that is going to be struck down because it's been shaken. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 